Well, if that doesn't get you amped up, I'm not sure what will. Welcome to NASCAR Legends. This is a historic NASCAR racing simulator released back in 1999 by Papyrus, and it simulates the 1970 NASCAR Grand National season. I remember seeing this on the shelf back in Best Buy and other game shops back in 1999 and wanting it so bad, I think I downloaded the demo and played Bristol and Darlington about a thousand times back when demos actually let you do something in them. Uh, but this is an awesome sim, released at a really interesting time for Papyrus uh, in 1999. And I wanted to go through it today, just talk about what NASCAR Legends is, because I think folks see Grand Prix Legends, and if you're into Formula One, uh, you know all about Grand Prix Legends, probably have played it but maybe you haven't explored NASCAR Legends and you maybe think it's the same thing or vice versa maybe uh, and so take a look through NASCAR Legends show everyone what it's all about but this sim came out in 1999 came out just a few months later than NASCAR Racing 3 which was the big NASCAR sim at the time and it uses all the same tech really that NASCAR 3 used the same graphics engine the same track rendering and AI systems but there are some tweaks here and there that make it pretty interesting so let's go through some of the menus you load up NASCAR Legends and uh, you're brought to the normal papyrus menu of things to do you can race in a single race you can race in a championship you can actually do some multiplayer although not sure that would work these days unless you're doing direct IP stuff uh, but I think one of the cool features of this is the driver info so let's click in here this is the driver selection screen if you're familiar with I guess NASCAR Racing 2 through NASCAR Racing 3 and even beyond this looks quite familiar uh, and I think the interesting thing about this is if I click on driver info here and go past my car the player they included historic photos and bios on all of the real NASCAR drivers in the Sims. We've got John Sears here, we've got Buddy Baker, and it talks about their different accomplishments and who they were. And I think details like that are awesome and absolutely lacking in modern Sims. Uh, and so you can actually learn about these drivers. Let me see here the Dodge um, Daytona car with the high wing in the back. I think what everybody thinks of when you think of older NASCAR, 1970s NASCAR, really only raced for a season or two. Uh, and they included the short uh, track bodies as well. There were many circuits where the drivers actually raced the older versions of the cars without the wings uh, and the nose especially. I think if you're racing that around North Wilkesboro or something, you're just going to end up getting it knocked off. So they included both versions and depending on the track you race on, you're actually able to, uh, or it automatically switches. And they also include the Ford Torino. Uh, here's AJ Foyt, of course. AJ Foyt didn't really race in that many races in 1970, which the sim uh, covers, but he was a prominent racer, especially at Riverside. I think he actually won that race in 1970, so he's included as well. David Pearson, the Silver Fox, of course. I just love the uh, the artwork and everything. It really lets you feel like you're there and learn a bit about what you're racing. Go through the rest of the real drivers, and the thing to note uh, is that they didn't have a full field of real drivers. It was very common in these days. I don't think any NASCAR game at all had a full field until you get to some of the EA titles around 2003-2004. And, uh, and even then we were just spoiled by downloaded cars off the internet. But what you're seeing here is totally stock and uh, what was included in the game. So Bobby Allison as well. Skip Pascal Yarborough there of course. Uh, Cecil Gordon, the other Gordon who raced Car 24, Donnie Allison in the 27, Dave Marcus without his Goodyear cap, oddly enough here, but racing the 30, um, 30 car here, Dick Brooks. Now, Plymouth as well included, and the Plymouth Superbird was the other winged car. Of course, Richard Petty uh, famously drove. Uh, we have got Wendell Scott as well uh, in the 34 car, Pete Hamilton, the winner of the Daytona 500 in 1970 and a driver from my neck of the woods in New England uh, just had a short run in NASCAR really and then Richard Petty of course and so uh, one criticism I read in some of the reviews of this game is that the Plymouth Superbird and the Dodge Daytona used the same car shape but the fact that they had 
uh, I guess four real car shapes in the game was, was something special because NASCAR games up until this point, if you think of NASCAR 1, NASCAR 2, NASCAR 3, they just had one car shape for all the cars to use, even though there were subtle differences uh, between the cars. And so having at least two, if not four different car shapes for the uh, super speedways and then the short tracks uh, was, was something special. So it's interesting that that was a criticism, but something I read. Uh, James Hilton, of course, he actually won a race in 1970. Uh, Tiny Lund, just had a run with him at Riverside. Uh, Elmo Langley, longtime pace car driver. Bobby Isaac, the season champion for 1970. Leroy Yarborough, and I think, oh, Charlie Glotzback is there at the end, and Neil Castells, that's it. But the rest of these are made up, but funny, they actually included uh, descriptions from them as well, so you might be led to believe they're real drivers, but beyond the first 20 or so, those are all the licensed drivers they were able to get, and that was a problem uh, with Sims, still is, and is probably the reason we don't see more Sims these days simulating full series. It's hard to get the rights uh, to different cars and things, but full-fledged driver, um, viewer, and, and uh, season standings editor or roster editor really you can um, add or remove drivers as you want and the game was really built and all these papyrus NASCAR sims were built to allow you to download or create your own paint schemes load those up so you could create whoever you wanted to race against or download and there are many downloads out there for different uh, different drivers, different paint schemes. You can download pretty much all the cars from the 1970 season as well as, I've seen, I think I've seen car sets for all of the 70s uh, for all the different drivers. So cool stuff and one of the main draws to the sim I would say. Um, and so I'll go here, I'll actually adjust my name real quick from the player. I guess we'll call myself the old classic Richie Axelson change my 41 Papyrus Racing Plymouth to Richie Axelson. And we'll save it there. I'll show you the paint shop real quick, just jump in there. I think it's almost impossible to paint a nice car from within the game itself, although I always had fun choosing different colored rims. We'll put black rims on this car. Uh, but the real feature was to import and export your paint schemes, and that would let you edit it in like a Photoshop or I guess Paint Shop Pro at the time that this was big uh, and then import the car back so you could have all the layering and all that and I think included in the root directory for the game are different flat files that you could use to uh, build your own paint scheme so it's all about painting I think that's something folks have always liked about NASCAR games the paint schemes so we've got our player car there so that's the driver selection screen. By default, you got a 43 car roster with your car in it uh, for the 1970 season. They included actually a lot of extra cars as well, just more fictional drivers as well as, I guess I haven't looked at these, but a few additional player cars. Whoop. I'll just see here, the 29, the 75, and the 91, all papyrus racing cars, but something else to drive, I guess, of the different makes so that you could actually race those yourself. So. Obviously the cars are a big part of the game, but then the tracks as well. I'm actually jump over to single race. I can show you the different circuits. So you're loaded up with a, a smattering of circuits, but a much shorter list than was actually raced in 1970. I think in 1970 itself, there were 48 different NASCAR races. Of course, repeating circuits quite a bit, but NASCAR was a lot different in the 70s where they would go to a lot of uh, smaller circuits, run a lot of shorter races as well as the long ones. And I think it was 1972 or 1973 that Winston came in and they really revamped the whole thing, got rid of a lot of the shorter races, a lot of the smaller tracks, and uh, you know, uh, strengthened the whole series overall, I guess, made everything a little more consistent. But this was from a time before that and the track selection, even though it's not the full list of tracks in the game, is quite interesting. You have tracks like Alabama International Motor Speedway. That's Talladega, for those of you that don't know. Uh, Atlanta, of course, but then you've also got ones that you've never, uh, or you, you probably don't know these days, race NASCAR at one point. So Bowman Gray being one of those, the Greenville Pickens, classic racetracks that uh, have lost their luster, I guess, from the top level of uh, oval motorsport in the U.S. North Wilkesboro, of course. Ontario, really interesting uh, square indie-like track out in California. Uh, Texas, this is the Texas World Speedway, the big oval that's just been recently torn down, unfortunately, in College Station, Texas. And then a track from my neck of the woods, Thompson Speedway. 
in Connecticut. Um, they actually raced there in 1970, I believe the only season. And I have to think this was only included because uh, Papyrus and Dave Kemmer, the lead programmer, are located in the Boston area. So that's a close track to all of us up here. If I jump back out of this, we'll come back to the single race in a second. Championship mode, uh, something included with every every racing game, of course, but you can race through the Grand National schedule. Take a quick look at that schedule. It, of course, doesn't have the full schedule because uh, all of the races are not, uh, or all the tracks are not included with the game. The big notable missing track from this game is Daytona. And it's one of those that they just didn't have the rights to use it. I think Sega actually owned the rights for Daytona as a as an image with their uh, Daytona USA arcade games up until the early 2000s. So it wasn't something that any of these games could include. EA didn't even have Daytona for quite a long while. Uh, but there are some third-party tracks available. Uh, I don't have any of those installed in this version. This is pretty much bone stock just to show you what The Sims all about. But the Daytona version that's out there is actually quite nice and I think was created by Papyrus and uh, handed out at some select events. So. Uh, I wanted to do maybe a single race or two just to show off the sim, show off the different tracks and talk a little more about it. And I figured for the first one, I'll go to Atlanta. And it's the old Atlanta, so we'll go to track here. Uh, and this is the Atlanta before the reconfiguration, of course, that occurred in the 90s. And so it's just the natural oval. Uh, and let me just go out for practice real quick and make sure everything feels good. But yeah, so here we are in the sim on pit road. Always have the last pit stall in these old papyrus sims. See if I can get out without hitting John Sears here. <laughs> there we go, spin the tires. Oh, kick the car out. And we'll go down the pit. So, no speed limit, I believe, in the pits. Although the AI don't absolutely fly down. You gotta make sure nobody's gonna pull out in front of you, I suppose. And then we'll come out onto the circuit. So, this game, if you're looking at it and you played NASCAR 3, it looks exactly like NASCAR 3, but I read some of the reviews of it, uh, they're still online actually from IGN and another source, and they talk about the handling of the cars being one of the real notable gains with this and warranting its own release. And it's true, the cars feel nothing like they do in NASCAR 3. They have much less grip, uh, they're obviously a lot faster around a super speedway uh, without any kind of restrictor plates. And the tires, uh, you know, with, besides just not having grip, they uh, heat up really fast and wear out really quick. Sometimes you can't even go a full fuel stint without burning up the tires. So it is quite a bit different, although the bones in the uh, back end are quite the same. But clearly, as I come out of turn two here at Atlanta, this is a bit different than Grand Prix Legends, and you're not able to really make this look much better than it does here. Uh, and it's because of the engine. So this is built on the original, I guess I'd call it the original Papyrus racing engine that was built with the Indy 500 simulation in 1989. All of the sims between Indy 500, including IndyCar, IndyCar 2, NASCAR 1, NASCAR 2, NASCAR Legends here, they were all built upon progressions of the same engine and have a lot of the same traits. If you play them, you will definitely recognize the cars. Oh, these two are gonna try to come out and fade in front of me. No, you don't. But you'll definitely recognize uh, some of the same qualities in the sim, and they really are progressions on each other. The handling has a distinct feel. This does not feel that different, honestly, than a NASCAR Racing 1 or even an Indianapolis 500 simulation, although there's always enhancements. But starting with Grand Prix Legends in 1998, a year prior to this game coming out, Papyrus started using, or Dave Kemmer with Papyrus, started using a new racing engine. And that's why Grand Prix Legends was so advanced for its time. It used a brand new racing engine that had a full 3D modeling and allowed the car to get airborne and suspension to interact correctly, tires with much better modeling. I've read some information about how this all came to be because if you think about 1998 being a year before NASCAR Legends came out, why, did, why didn't they use the better engine for NASCAR Legends? And it seems like Sierra Online, who was the publisher for Papyrus Games, did not want them to use the more difficult engine for a NASCAR game. And so NASCAR 3 was built upon the same bones, Ooh, we're gonna get squeezed down low here from the 115, 
use the same bones as all the sims before because it was easier to handle. They thought uh, folks who wanted to play a NASCAR game didn't want something that was as hard as a Grand Prix Legends. And I don't know if that's true, but looking back at very old forum posts and message boards, that seems to be the general sentiment is that the public was not ready for a NASCAR game built off of the Grand Prix Legends engine, and it wasn't until NASCAR 4 that that actually happened. And of course, NASCAR 2002, 2003 followed and uh, were wild successes. So maybe they were wrong all along, or maybe it took a little more work. I don't know if there were ever demo versions or anything shown of NASCAR games with the uh, newer engine before this. But we'll come to a stop in the pit stall there. So the car feels good. I'm gonna skip qualifying and everything. Just do a quick 16 lap race around Atlanta skip through qualifying, go to warm up, and then the race. So, start at the back, but it should be fun to try to fight my way through. Just 16 laps, no cautions or anything. I'll check the car setup real quick. Car setups uh, are fully featured in NASCAR Legends, uh, but the settings are a bit different. They actually incorporated some things that are more like the older cars than you would find in some of the newer ones, uh, both in the settings as well as names, Screwjacks being one of those. I believe that would be uh, the different suspension uh, or how the shocks potentially are. Very interesting, but I'll use the Ace setup. Those tend to be pretty good. And so here we go, we'll do a quick race around Atlanta. One pace lap followed by 16 green flag laps. We'll see where I am on the grid. And I always loved the dashboards of the older Sims. Of course, it's just a static image with the gauges superimposed on top, but you got very used to seeing them. It's very nostalgic to see the old panels. And I do think the circuits that Papyrus was able to get for this are are very great for the time period. Atlanta was an awesome track. It was one of the fast tracks. You have to know that NASCAR in 1970, uh, throughout the 60s and, and through the early 70s, raced at many, many short tracks. And so these bigger tracks, Atlanta, Darlington, Charlotte, they were something very special uh, to get away from those half mile bull rings. And they paid more points. NASCAR in 1970 had the most convoluted point structure. It was paid out based off of the length of the race, and uh, maybe prize money or something. So every race paid a different amount of points. And that's one of the things Winston changed when they came in, is to get rid of the, the shorter races, make sure all the races pay the same amount of points. So the, the whole sport changed quite a bit at that time. But we'll come to the green flag here. Just have to take my time for the first couple laps. I think the green is out. We've got a little Sprite flag man up there waving. Actually, it looks better than the modern flagman in iRacing and other sims, honestly, but come through turns one and two. The whole field in front. Love seeing the cars with the high wing. And there are some mods out there. Uh, I mentioned, obviously, car sets and painted cars, so you can race all actual cars, but there actually are some 3D mods as well to make the uh, car shape a little bit nicer. This is all stock though, so it doesn't actually look that bad even the way it is here. We'll come to complete the first lap. The cars are not as good on the suspension as a more modern racing car. Oh, we'll fly down low and pass a few cars here. Oh, just try to stick on the bottom side. Got cars right next to me. <laughs> there we go. The suspension is very stiff and makes the car slide a lot in weird ways. You kind of feel like you're driving a boat at some points, but I guess those must be semi-realistic handling characteristics of a 1970s stock car. But all right, able to make it through the first couple of laps at least without hitting anybody. Hitting cars in these older NASCAR games, it's very easy to spin yourself or them out. Oh man, getting squeezed down low, I have to drive out of the apron. Hey, it's actually a little more aggressive than I thought they'd be. We'll come out of turn two at Atlanta. And the whole field relatively close together right now, but the field spread is also quite a lot larger with this NASCAR field uh, than it would have been in NASCAR 3 at least, bone stock. 
the uh, real drivers are quite a lot quicker than the fictional ones and you'll always find that they're up front so we gotta pass all these fake drivers before we'll get to the real ones but I guess that I guess that serves uh, history a little bit better as well oh, right on the apron there See if I can come out of the turn draft this Torino a little bit actually really on the inside of him we'll come into three and four. Oh, you almost turned into me there and so I am using this with wheel and pedals it's quite easy to set up uh, if you Google NASCAR Legends oh, this squeeze down low if you Google NASCAR Legends you can find a download for this it's pretty much abandoned wear at this point being 21 years old and uh, all you need to do is set your steering wheel to be a fairly low amount of degrees of rotation you have to remember steering wheels in the 90s early 2000s we didn't have 900 degree steering wheels and so uh, you want to do something between 250 and 350 degrees. I think I've got mine at about 300. Uh, and that'll let you calibrate it. You can use wheel and pedals. I don't think you could use a shifter because there's no options to map uh, all the gears. So I'm just using the paddles to do that. But the only other thing you really need is to download N-Glide, which is a 3D wrapper emulator for the uh, 3D FX chipset and I, by default I believe this tries to run with direct 3d but it really doesn't work on a modern graphics card it kind of freaks out so you have to use and glide with 3d effects but as you can see it works quite well I'm using a modern Nvidia card and a modern Windows 10 computer and this looks about as good as I remember it or probably a lot smoother actually than my PC ran it back in the day we'll come out of the turn let me look at how many laps we've done on lap 7 now to turn one on the low side here hopefully give me space making my way up the field ever so slowly got Neil Castells on the outside there so that's the first real car I think I've seen real driver see if I can get the run on the low side here down the back straight away much quicker than these cars out back whoa Neil touching me there oh I'm going spinning let's we'll see if I can gather it up <laughs> power slide there oh but I'm gonna lose all the positions Get back on the pavement, see if I can gas it back up. Ah, oh, but back to last place. Finally get to the non-fictional drivers and get a half spin. See if I can gather it up though and pass a couple more before the end. I'm halfway through the race, so things aren't over just yet. Come through turns one and two. But yeah, even an older game like this, oh, just tapping the wall there. I find myself having a lot of fun. Once you figure out the handling quirks, figure out how the cars steer, it's it's just as fun as it's ever been. And racing a really interesting era that's quite underrepresented. There have been quite a few mods for the 1970 NASCAR season uh, for NASCAR 2003, some quite nice mods, but I feel like the complete package here gives you a little bit more having uh, some accurate tracks to race on, having some of the accurate drivers, the history included with them, all bundled up. And of course the rules, no pit speed limit, uh, no restrictor plates, you can simulate those things, but having it all in one package is quite nice. And I like what Papyrus was doing here. It seems like in the end this sim did not sell very well. Pass a bunch of these cars real quick now that everybody's spread out. But it seems like this sim didn't really sell that well. The IGN review of it notes that it's probably catering towards the older NASCAR fans that want to feel nostalgic. And NASCAR in 1999 was getting bigger than ever. Uh, but even then, I'm sure the modern sim sold way more than this. I don't think I ever really saw this uh, for re-release. It was quickly on the cheaper shelves. I think the jeweled CD case version of it was much more common in the early 2000s for five or ten dollars or whatever it was uh, but there are big box versions with the big thick manuals that I've seen on eBay for you know quite a penny I think the most recent one was going for like 75 80 dollars which is quite a lot but if you really like this type of thing and are collecting these older sims then it's probably worth it so we'll come through turns three and four we'll just Go around the outside. This car in front almost looks like Buddy Baker's car, but it's the 124. And I remember playing the demo so much 
uh, and, and to mention again the demo included Bristol and Darlington and you could do a single race at either of those I think only up to 10% distance but other than that you were kind of free to do whatever you wanted but I remember learning some of the fictional drivers names and everything because I raced against them so much I really liked the uh, older NASCARs here that kind of reminded me of the short track cars that I would go see on a Saturday night just in how they looked aesthetically I didn't know much better at the time come around the outside of this 119 oh he's gonna squeeze me into the wall to check up a little bit it's just three laps to go hugging the line there see if I can come around the outside of him there we go almost back up to Neil but I don't think I'm gonna catch him before the end of the race tires in the corner. The sounds are much different as well than NASCAR 3. So we'll come out of the turn, get the uh, two to go at the line. And of course you can simulate full distance races if you wanted to. It'd be quite exhausting, but mechanical failures and everything are modeled both for you and for the AI. And one thing I always liked, I don't know if I'll see it on one of these short races, but NASCAR Legends cars could actually, the AI cars could actually be trailing oil for uh, lap after lap and you would see this big plume, this big cloud coming out behind them but they would actually stay on the track for a few laps before their engine would ultimately give and honestly that's what happened in real races so it's really neat to see and I don't think anything that I've ever seen in a NASCAR game since usually cars kind of break down so we'll come around the outside of Neil there so get back the car which spun me out maybe I hit him right up against the wall though I think we're on the last lap actually come around turns three and four or maybe we'll have one more to go I don't think I saw the white flag last time all right so here we come to the line yeah white flag is out now one more lap Let's see if we can pass a couple of these guys they're all working on each other. The high groove is working for me here, but oh, a tiny Lund there gonna come out and squeeze me right against the wall. There we go. Come back on the low side of him. Oh, he almost turns into me in a turn three. The last lap, you'd want to squeeze somebody stuck behind this 121. Come around the high side though. Oh, gonna get squeezed up. We'll come to the line. So good race, good little race there. I think I could have gone up, oh, my crew said something. Could have gone up a lot further, I think, if, uh, <laughs> especially if I started up front. But car is very fast, just catching. Ah, uh, here's David Pearson in front of me, so I almost caught him. But exit out there, I'll take a look at the results. Oh, we get the racing newspaper, of course, just like in Grand Prix Legends, actually. But disappointment looms for the rising star. Tough race brings heartache to one of the racing young guns. No wonder I always dream dreamt up different stories of uh, my racing career, seeing stuff like this. Well, come. I want to take a quick look. Of course, you got the full replay mode. I want to take a quick look here at my uh, little incident with Neil. See whose fault it really was. Ooh, and we have an incidents button. Let's see if that works. Ha ha. Now, wouldn't that be nice in a lot of modern sims? And not have to fish through the replay. We'll go full screen with it. See how poorly I did on the low side three wide coming into turn three well I'm right around the line I think he hit me actually spinning the car incredible save <laughs> into the grass missing the wall there crucially and back on the circuit so driving my what looks like a boat honestly <laughs> in this 3d environment but saving the car there so fun stuff as always. Exit out, I wanna take a look at another track as well. So I showed you the super speedway, I guess, experience with Atlanta Motor Speedway. And uh, maybe we'll go short track racing. Let's do, let's do Thompson because that's my home circuit, I guess, just a, a little while away, about an hour away from where I live. Uh, and I'll show you the other end of things. Hopefully I can get around here without hitting somebody. But go to the track and I don't believe there'll be a full field of 43. Let's see here if uh, includes entries, but yeah, here we go. So 25 cars, much shorter, but I don't think a full field raced at Thompson anyway, back in 1970. Yeah, it looks like 30 cars actually raced that race. So not quite the real limit, but pretty good for this small of a circuit in a sim. 
I'll go put on the ACE car setup. Let's do a couple practice laps, make sure I know my way around here. I'm actually interested to see how realistic it looks because I don't really remember playing this track very much. And of course, I don't really know how this track looked in 1970 anyway, but it should be a paperclip oval with very high banked corners. We'll come through. I'm not sure the pit's ever wrapped around like that, but yeah, it doesn't look super far off the Thompson I know. All right, come onto the circuit. Pretty high banked corners. Of course, modifieds, NASCAR modifieds are the big thing that races here. Thompson written on the wall in the back straightaway. Very cool to see. So rocket out of the corner across the line. Now short track racing in these older sims is fun to drive but very hard to race as we'll pass Bobby Allison there and you can see the cars have the short wing or no wing version of them. They've got the short track bodies on them automatically so it's cool it just switches for you depending on the circuit. But racing these old tracks is really hard because of the, the short tracks with the AI. They're a little bit all over the place, and if you tap them, just like you saw at Atlanta there, they will absolutely go spinning. We'll come up behind Kelly Arborough, though, in the Wood Brothers, number 21. Oh, go around the high side, maybe. The track flattens out a little bit above that white line, so you can't really go up there. But the groove at Thompson is not around the bottom of the circuit. It's midway to high on the racetrack, kind of where I am, honestly. It's cool to see the AI doing that as well. Oh, very cool stuff. And I love the old advertisements on the side of the circuit. It brings you there to 1970. All right, so I feel like I've got my handle on Thompson. Just come to the pit lane here on the back straightaway. Come under Cecil Gordon here. And the one thing I always hated about your crew being first on pit lane always is that you have to slow down a little more uh, soon than the AI do. One thing you see in the older racing footage is the cars exit the circuit and absolutely fly down the pit lane. And I always wanted to do that, but you can't really when your pit stall is the first one. All right, but we'll go to the race. So this will just be a 10 lap race. It's going to be real speedy. Uh, but we got Pete Hamilton on the pole, which makes sense since... He's local. Oh no, we got Charlie Glotz back on the pole. I guess, I'm not sure why it's not showing me. Here we go, leaderboard. So Charlie Glotz back on the pole with Buddy Baker, Cale Yarborough, and Bobby Isaac up front. Wendell Scott doing quite well in fifth place there to start. So see what I can do here at Thompson. A little bit of a home event for myself. I think just one or so, just a couple fictional cars in this one since the grid is so much smaller. but we'll pull away. And it would have been, I always think about what it would have been like to see NASCAR Grand National at Thompson since the biggest, you know, biggest series that we get up here, I guess would be the Wheel and Modified Tour or uh, the NASCAR East Series, but a lot of the more regional series are a little more exciting to watch sometimes. But yeah, seeing the big Cup Series at the time here must have been pretty cool. We'll come through turns three and four, very much expecting the field to uh, check up as they would do. There we go, green flag. Oh, and everybody's slow. See if I can take advantage of it down the inside. Right against the bottom of the circuit, not the fast line. You can see it flattens out quite a bit down there. So once you're up to speed and really lapping, you don't want to be on the bottom. Slam on the brakes for turns three and four. And this track's quite a quick track for a short track just because the straightaways are really long uh, for a short track. It's kind of like a Martinsville, just with a lot higher banking. Well, but come through the turns. Here's Pete Hamilton in the 40 car, raced as Richard Petty's teammate throughout the season. I think ended up being hurt in a, a crash which really ended his career early but was a big modified racer he definitely would have raced modifieds here at Thompson many times so I'm sure he would have been excited to come here in 1970 
So step behind Cecil Gordon here on the bottom side, but making progress. I think the bottom side is always a little bit quicker in these older sims. Oh, Gordon's gonna run a little wide. See if I can come around the bottom of him here. Side by side on the front straightaway. I think I'm three wide with AJ Foyt as well. <laughs> there we go. Slotting into place behind Dave Marcus. Oh, car gets a little squirrely coming out of the turn. We're gonna come to the line here about halfway. Oh, making a ton of positions there alongside David Pearson. He's quite far back. Usually he's up front in NASCAR Legends here. But stuck in now behind Donnie Allison in the 27. I think the cars from the 1970 season have a very cool look to them. I always really like the NASCARs, especially the oh, touching Donnie there. Oh no, we're gonna spin to the inside, hit the wall. Oh, kind of a repeat of the Atlanta race. Oh man, try to get on the track, get away. Oh, this is gonna be real tough to try to catch them now. We'll see what I can do here. I was saying, I always think I like the cars from just the next couple of seasons, 1971, 72, with Petty's amazing Plymouth. I just think the cars look so aggressive. And, and so 1969, 1970 are kind of awkward seasons for NASCAR, in my opinion. The winged cars are neat, but they're a little long and a little high off the ground, especially in NASCAR Legends here. So I always thought it was interesting that these ended up being the seasons modeled and not something just a couple years later when the cars really looked like muscle cars. We'll come down, I think the end of this race will be not as exciting. I was making great progress there. I was actually thinking I might be able to get to the front. I guess it means I'm gonna have to do one more <laughs> than this. Oh, coming into three and four, a little late on the brakes there. You can actually get into a pretty good groove once you get racing, once you get going around a few laps. So come around the high side. Definitely a lot quicker than most of these cars, if not all of them. But it's not just being quicker, you gotta pass them, you gotta remain clean. I was trying a lot there going three wide and just about touched Donnie Allison. White flag though. Last lap. So come around turns one and two, onto the back straightaway. Catching up to the end of the field, but I don't think I'm gonna get any positions here. Try to get on the gas early. Oh, I'm just gonna miss it by one lap. Come to the checkered flag. All right, there's the flag. <laughs> so there's the flag. So crashing out at Thompson, but definitely gotta do one more. One more track just to see just to see what it's like. So we'll come away. Disappointment once again for our rising star. A tough race, of course. All right, so exit out of here. I'll do one more, one more quick race just to show everybody the sim. I think I'll go to Texas. I think Texas World Speedway is, is one of those tracks that's not known today very well. So we'll go to the track and I'm gonna be daring and I'm gonna go straight to the race without any practice, but I'll use that ace setup again because I know it's good. All right, we'll go to the race. So, a long field of cars in front of me, but Texas World Speedway is an interesting one. It's one of the only examples of a super speedway in the way we think of it today. Fast, big tracks like California, Michigan. It's one of the only examples of one that's actually gone away and hopefully not a sign of what's to come. But this track actually went away quite a long time ago. I think the last competitive NASCAR type race around it was in the 90s with the ARCA series. Uh, there's a video on YouTube with it. But after that, the oval itself fell into disrepair. And before that, it had many big series racing here. USAC and CART raced around Texas World Speedway. NASCAR, obviously, uh, raced around here. It's one of the, the big tracks. And it's interesting that it went away because after the big series stopped going there, it turned into a world-class road racing circuit. They had a great circuit, which I don't think is going to be modeled here, but we can maybe look at the grass on the infield. Yeah, I see, I see pavement. So 
it is modeled here, but the track actually would do some infield action to our left and cross the uh, oval circuit uh, perpendicular to it, across it, and go into the uh, back straightaway off to the right there in a big section of road course as well. It was raced uh, for training schools, SCCA. I think there were some uh, minor series races there for many years, and it's just in the last couple years they've actually uh, started tearing down the whole speedway, and it's, it's fully closed now. There were some pictures, quite difficult pictures to look at of them tearing through the banking and everything, but pretty interesting circuit, especially it, it died really when NASCAR was was big, oh, getting checked up there. We'll come to the green flag. This should be pretty much flat out, I'd imagine. But it died when NASCAR was getting big, which is really interesting, because you wouldn't think of a track of this size. Seems like it would be the perfect fit, but I guess once Texas Motor Speedway was built, its fate was sealed for sure. All right, come up to fourth gear. Oh, the whole field stacking up a bit through one and two. Track feels a little more narrow in this version, but overall I'm pretty pleased. Or Papyrus really knew what they were doing by this stage in modeling tracks. They're not perfect, but they're for the technology at the time, they're quite good at simulating the real thing. Oh, all the cars are so snappy. You get a little nervous around the AI in these sims just because they make abrupt moves like that. Oh, but <laughs> come up behind these cars. Oh, just nowhere around. Just another lap, I bet. Things will string out a little bit, be a little easier to pass them. Oh, and I think there's about one car with here on the bottom. I might be able to sneak up a little bit. All right, come down the back straight away on the low side. Oh yeah, making a good pass, couple passes there. Come into turns three and four, just nice and easy. Don't want to slide up at all. <laughs> Do what I've done in the last couple races. go. So picked up a couple spots on that lap. In the draft. The draft worked as ever. They were really figuring it out by this point. There were some drivers in the 60s that had, and even earlier honestly, that figured out driving behind another car made you quicker in a straight line. And by the 70s it was regular practice. So the car got very understeery there. You have to enter a little higher than I did. Got one car coming down low, but yeah, I'll be able to pull in front of him. tires through the corner. This track would absolutely punish the tires. I'm sure racing a full race around here, you have to pit many, many times to change your firestones, most likely. All right, making good progress, but whoa, as we come to turn one, gonna get squeezed. This 127 knows what he's doing. And you can see in front of me a big divide between two packs of cars and I have to think that's the separation between the real drivers and the fictional drivers. But if I can get up there we can see. Oh, on the low side. And for the time, you know, in 1999, if you think about the other games that were big, so I'm gonna take full advantage here on the apron. I wanna get past these cars. Other games that were big at the time, obviously Grand Prix Legends was miles ahead of this, just based off of the engine it used and how sophisticated the physics were. It's why it was the sim it was. Uh, but this is a ton of fun and it's realistic enough that you can apply real driving tactics to it. I'm sure there were many old racers that would play this and have a ton of fun. I was oh, right next to Elmo Langley there in the 64. So it's not all the real drivers that are up front. Elmo's stuck back here with all the fictional guys like me. But you can definitely apply real driving techniques. Slow in, fast out. Cars don't have a lot of grip. The setup changes react pretty realistically to what they would in real life. Oh, sliding up a bit, car above me, luckily getting out of it. Flat out down the back straightaway. These cars were fast too, 180 miles an hour in 1970 is no joke. As you're pretty much just sat with a lap belt. 
and a pretty empty interior. Some roll bars, but not a lot. Alright, come to turn one. Right at the front of this little pack now. Oh, I'm gonna slide up. Don't run into him. There we go. Oh, <laughs> side by side. It's even scarier than it is in a more modern sim to race side by side here. <laughs> and I love this car in front. Is it sponsored by the 128? I think it's sponsored by Chinese Takeout. <laughs> the Papyrus devs had fun. If you read some of the uh, fictional driver's bios, they're quite, quite fun, light-hearted stuff. <laughs> it is the Chinese Takeout car. See if I can get around him. This car's up here a little faster though. And great racing in the draft. I do love racing around Talladega in this game and the Daytona circuit, which you can find online and download. Racing a super speedway with these cars is quite enjoyable. Oh, 110 there. That honestly looks like the 10 car of Bill Champion. But just the 110, maybe they built it off of the real thing. So three laps to go. Should be able to get in front of this little group, but I don't know if I'll catch the pack in front. So we'll fly full speed on the low side. Whoa, oh, really take the corner poorly. Oh, I'm gonna slide out wide. Didn't work to my advantage. Gonna get passed right back. That's what you get for trying, <laughs> trying to pass where you can't pass. Whoa, oh, back in the slipstream though, pulling up on him. Oh, right around the top, not easy. Car doesn't have a lot of grip up here. All right, so gonna play it a little, little more safe than that, but should be able to come on the low side. Whoa, are we going three wide? Need to come in a little wider into turn one. Let off a little earlier. Keep it on the bottom, there we go. Flat foot now, uh, car side by side. I kept it in the throttle there, would have hit him. I've learned my lesson now. All right, so we're just with two to go, which is really three laps <laughs> in the way it counts here. We'll come out of turn four on the low side, make a pass of the 112 car. So I did it. I made it past all the fictional drivers, I think. We'll just have a couple laps to myself at the end, but that's quite fitting. So I've been wanting to go through some of the older games, and NASCAR Legends has come up quite often uh, within some of the comments in my videos, folks wanting to, wa wanting me to try out this game or show them maybe what the difference is or compare it to Grand Prix Legends. I don't think there's a lot to compare here. Firstly, they're simulating completely different motorsports, and the fact that they're both called Legends, both produced by the same studio, I obviously can see the parallels there, but NASCAR Legends is a completely different beast to Grand Prix Legends, but it's still good, it's still fun. I think uh, there hasn't been really anything you know, else that has come out to uh, take over what this is doing. The mod for the 1970 season for NASCAR 2003 is great, but it's not quite the same thing. And having all of it in one nice package, if this is your type of thing, I think you can have a lot of fun with NASCAR Legends. You can go try to search through the deep holes on the internet, try to find uh, some of those car sets and updated tracks and everything. But quite a fun game. We'll come to the line here, complete the little race in College Station, Texas. I wonder where I finished this time. 23rd, I'm still gonna get the disappointed newspaper. <laughs> Disappointment looms. I think you gotta finish maybe in the top 15, top 10 to get something better than this, but I had fun, I wasn't too disappointed. So, NASCAR Legends. Overall, really solid. Really solid game, still holds up. I think it holds up better than the other NASCAR games from this time period, simply because it simulates something that uh, is unique. And we should, <laughs> we could definitely use more unique games these days. But I hope you enjoyed this. I wanna do some more of these kind of casual 
reviews. Uh, so let me know what you thought, and I'll see you all again next time.